guys, welcome back to the gear shed. I am that guy. So today, we're going to be talking about uh, your raft valves. And that's a really important part of your equipment. So, before we get into it, I would like you to please subscribe to our content, hit the bell, make sure you're getting all our updates. First off, this right here is your standard Leafield C7 valve. Now, pretty much every modern boat has them. Uh, my old boat, Serenity, has some military valves, which are a completely different animal. But today, we're going to be talking about these C7 valves. Now, a um, couple different parts to them that are important. You got the inside part. This is inside your boat. Um, this is usually going to rattle around. You usually don't have problems with these, but if you do, they're pretty easy to finagle into there. Um, now, you got a little rubber washer here. You guys can see that, but the last piece is the actual valve itself. Now, let me get real close here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The valve does basically this. You put air into it and all that. Um, has a little valve stem on the inside, and you want to make sure these st stay clear. Uh, that's the biggest thing that really gets these things all jacked up. You get a lot of grit and sand and things like that in there, so that kind of jacks up your boat. Now, the floor valve on the Defiant, my little 10 foot high side uh, Mini Max, broke. And I was wondering why it was leaking so much. And it turns out, right about here, the whole valve cracked and sheared off. Uh, only took a little kick from Cassandra to break that thing off. Popped right off, floor just went, just pulled over to the side and said, hey, look, here's what's up. It's broken. We had to turn it over, take it down. Seal the valve off another boat so we can play with it the whole weekend. And, uh, that was really how that went. So, I just got some more, and today we're going to install them. So, the first thing that we want to do is, um, and I, I don't know why they do this. Um, online, you will see some videos that will tell you to lubricate this thing with 303. Um, I don't know why they do it after it's installed, but... For some reason, they do. I, I don't understand it. So, um, instead of doing that, we're actually going to lube it up right now and then install it. And I'll show you guys how it's going to be installed, how you lubricate the valve, and how you just you just want to double check that it's, it's all good. So, uh, we're going to get into that, and uh, let's dive into the lubrication of this thing. So, this is a generally quick repair, but we are going to need to get some tools together before we do this. The first one is going to be... A valve wrench. So you got one side over here, this is for a Halky Roberts valve, and this is going to be for a Leafield uh, styled valve. Both valves have this kind of thing. Um, and so this is going to be one of your main tools that you're going to need for this. Uh, next up, you're going to want some Q-tips. This will just help you clean up some of the 303. Also, got some gloves here. Just want to make sure you don't get all this stuff on your skin. It's got some petroleum bacillates in it. So, um, And then, of course, you'll need your valve, o-ring and valve. It's good to have these. If you don't have them, they kind of mess up the system here. So, first thing we want to do, take the valve. You all know how this valve stem works. You turn it, you push it in and twist, and it pops out. I'll show you that again. Push it in and twist, and this right here, it just stays the way it is. So, next up, while that's open, make sure it's open, we're going to take some of your 303. This is the other thing you want to have. I didn't show this before, but well, 303 aerospace protectant, it's just the best thing that you can get. So, make sure that valve is open. Take your 303, and you're just going to squirt it right in there. And make sure you get the other side of it, just to, just to protect everything. You just want to make sure it's all good. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this q-tip and we want to swab around make sure it's just you know we just don't want it wet you don't the last thing you want in your valve is it to just be wet inside your boat so make sure you just swab every little bit um, again the q-tip kind of helps a lot just make sure you're getting in there really swabbing that out also kind of helps to rub it in a little bit make sure it it's all good. So, that only took one, so that's good. Um, now you can just pop your valve out, but what you want to do is you want to do this. 
make sure that you lubricate the valve the whole way. Um, really going to help it with longevity. So let's uh, go ahead and I'll show you how to install this and uh, it's a real easy fix. So let's get in there. All right, so here we are. Uh, this right here, you can see the bottom of the valve. This is the one that came with the valve here. It's already inside there, so we don't need this. But this one's already in here. So what we want to do, again, is, uh, and this one you got, this is where you kind of got to be careful with it. You need to take your aerospace protectant, and it helps to just rub it, rub it on there. And just make sure, I know I said before, you want to make sure that it's not wet inside your boat, but um, leave the valve open. This should dry pretty quickly. So we just want to make sure that's kind of lubricated. And then the other thing is our O-ring. So we're going to get a little bit of that on there. And make sure that's all good. If you get some of this stuff on your boat, the aerospace protectant, it's not going to hurt it. Um, you know, some companies, some people will use the aerospace protectant on their boats before they put it away for the winter. Um, I don't really stop boating in the winter, so that doesn't really work for me. But all we're going to do, make sure you got your O-ring on there. Um, and you can see some grooves from the previous O-ring that were in there. That We lost that. That popped off somewhere. So let's put that on there. And then this one just sandwiches it all together. So I was just kind of hand tighten it first because with the wrench it just takes forever if you're going to do that. But having all this stuff on here, all this 303 makes it really slippery as well. So uh, just another thing to note for your boat as you're working on it that when you put 303 on it, it gets really slippery. So if you do use 303 to put your boat away for the winter, then just know that that's going to be a potential issue. So now we take the valve wrench and we're going to take this little inverted side. It lines up like that. And all we do, crank it down. And right now you don't want to crank it down all the way. So you're just going to kind of hand tighten it a little bit. We're going to inflate it and then we're going to make sure there's nothing leaking around the outside here. If there are any leaks, we might have to take it off and, uh, you know, just clean it, a clean it up a little bit. So now we're going to inflate this floor and then from there we do our final tightening. So we're just going to check that out next. All right. So there you have the floor valve pretty much fully installed. Um, blew it up, didn't completely fill it up till the PR valve uh, popped, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to put the valve cover on because that's going to keep water from getting into the valve. Uh, again, you don't want water in the tube. So you just want to do this on whatever tube it is. Take a little water. Fortunately, I don't have soapy water, but I do have some water here. So just going to pour that on there. And great. It's not leaking. So our valve is reinstalled here. And there's just one more thing that we have to do. We're going to take this valve cover off here. And you want to crank it down just a little bit more from where it was. Right there. Maybe like a quarter turn, half turn. That's just going to seal it in there. So nothing left. So we can pop that. And we're ready to go. We're back on the river. All right, guys. That's it. That's all it takes to restore a boat to its operating condition when you got a valve blown out. Now, one thing I want to point out and stress, um, you know, it doesn't take a lot to fix this but it can be a really debilitating problem on the river. So make sure you take an extra valve, drop it in your repair kit, um, your, your sweep kits, whatever it is. Just make sure you have an extra valve. I mean, we had to cannibalize a thwart to kind of make this whole thing happen while we were on the river. So that really sucked. Um, just make sure you have a little bit of extra. We're rafters, we can carry a lot of stuff. It's not like it's a big deal. A valve's not gonna make or break it. We're not, you know, doing ultralight backpacking trips here. So. Um, if you have questions, please put them down in the comments section. I would be happy to answer any questions you have about boats and valves and what you should be doing and how it should be working. So, um, and just kind of let us know what you thought. If uh, there's more stuff you want to see, again, put it down in the comments. Uh, we're happy to do more gear shed articles to help you guys out. So uh, that's about it for the gear shed. Again, you just need a few things to replace it. I'd get some 303, get your valve, get a valve wrench. Um, and, you know, most rafting companies have valve wrenches, too, and most of them are pretty happy to bring, bring some beer by and 
you know, they'll be stoked to let you borrow a valve wrench. It's, you know, most people have them, so that's not a big deal. Um, all right, guys. Well, we'll see you down river, and thanks for joining us on the gear shed.